What is going on you guys? Jomak here for another episode of Jomak TFL and today pag-uusapan natin ang guaranteed steps ko in ways on how you can save on your laptop. Alright? You know guys, recently actually bumili ako ng laptop. It was pre-owned. Thereby, nakatipid ako sa cost niya. But at the same time, yung nakuha kong model is definitely upgradable. So, in, ibig, ang ibig lang sabihin na to, I will be able to upgrade the specs o yung computing power ng laptop in general para makipagsabayan sa mga bagong model ngayon. Siyempre, before we start, eh, gusto ko na rin i-share sa inyo yung importance ng having a uh, well-functioning laptop nowadays. Alam naman natin na yung technology is ang bilis na nagbabago, di ba guys? Hindi na actually enough yung Microsoft Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. Dapat alam mo na rin yung mga iba pang bagong software na nag nagiging update for these particular platforms. Now, I'm not saying naman na na pagka wala kang laptop, eh, you will miss out on things but it will definitely help for someone like you na nag-aaral nag right now and also uh, people na nagsa-start on their careers to have a personal laptop na talagang maaaral mo or magagamay mo. Ang video na to ay ginawa para doon sa mga viewers ko na nag-goal makakuha ng laptop for the best possible price and the best possible specs napasok pa rin sa mga budget niya. So, wag na natin patagalin guys. Isishare ko na yung mga tips and steps on how to get the best laptop. So, ang unang-unang consideration when you're buying a laptop or any gadget in particular, dapat guys, i-consider natin kung saan natin gagamitin yung particular na laptop or gadget na yun. Whereas for me, ang reason ko why I bought a new laptop or, or a pre-owned laptop na personal ko is because before I was using a company-provided laptop from my previous employer na recently na-realize ko na I want to shift from editing my videos using my mobile devices or sa phone lang ako dati nag edit ang gusto ko is start ko na siyang mag-edit through a formal editing software which is Adobe Premiere Pro and yung software na yun is available on a laptop so I decided to buy me one. So going uh, editing on a laptop syempre has its own advantages pero kasama din dito na gagastos nga ako for a new laptop and with this merong specific system requirements si Adobe Premiere Pro para makarun ng maayos yung program sa laptop. Mainly, actually, ang minimum system requirement niya is 8 gigs ng RAM, at least Windows 7 64-bit or higher, or Windows 10, a graphics card, and also a good processor, which is, I think, uh, around i5 or higher. If you're using the laptop for video editing, then I suggest you go for a i5 or i7 processors. i3 processors, guys, medyo baka mahirapan kayo, lalo na if you will be uploading on a resolution of 1080p. Like what I'm using now, uh, this video is maxed out at 1080p during my uploads. So since 1080p will require a lot of processing power, yun dapat ang goal nyo. At least 8 gigs ang RAM, i5, tapos uh, with the dedicated graphics card. For the OS naman, just make sure na you're getting at least Windows 7 64-bit, Windows 10 or higher. Ang reason for this guys is a lot of the programs that we're using right now for video editing will have a lot of updates and some of the updates hindi na magte-trickle down sa old operating software. So just make sure you get the best possible uh, latest software that is available to you. Ang next na step is to do a canvas online. Basically, canvassing will just enable you to determine kung ano yung more or less um, retail value number one yung, yung brand new na value niya pangalawa is yung more or less value niya sa marketplace right now you will use this as your reference point to check kung ang makukuha mong uh, laptop eventually is a very good deal or a fair deal or medyo nalugi ka so you need to uh, haggle or kailangan mong tumawad pag medyo mataas yung nakukuha mong price versus kung ano yung nakukuha mong value dun sa mismong laptop. So canvassing will help you with that. Okay, so kung nakapag-canvas na tayo, done na tayo with the canvassing, 
the next step is to determine kung sino yung more or less seller na fair mag-price and la lots of positive ratings. So, this is very crucial guys. Very critical ito. Always make sure na at the end of the day, ang pagbibilan mo or ang source mo ng pre-owned laptop, ah, these are for the pre-owned laptops, ah, yung mga bibili ng pre-owned laptops. Make sure, make sure, make sure, always make sure na ang pagbibilan mo is from a reputable source na marami ng feedback na positive. Or kung meron man naging negative na feedback, is more or less na resolve ng may-ari ng shop na pagbibilan mo. Okay? Napaka-importante dito na uh, kahit hindi man siya yung pinaka-lowest price, at least meron kang peace of mind kasi meron sila sometimes na ino-offer na mga warranty for about 7 to 14 days wherein pwede mo i-observe yung laptop, pwede mo ibalik sa kanila, or pwede nilang i-repair free of charge. Okay? So make sure you buy it from a reputable source. Uh, has a lot of ratings na positive and good feedback. So, ayun na nga guys. So, alam mo na more or less kung ano yung mga presyo ng mga laptops sa marketplace. Nakakuha ka na rin or nakahanap ka na rin ng reputable source or provider for your laptop. Ang next na kailangan mo i-determine is the specific make or model that will suit your needs or your, syempre, your budget. Ang um, purpose ng determining the specific make or model na kailangan mong laptop is for future proofing. Ang ibig sabihin lang nito is kung you will be able to use your laptop 6 months, 1 year from now, 2 years from now. Kailangan yung pipiliin natin is una, versatile yung gamit. Pangalawa is napakadaling i-upgrade and pangatlo, available yung parts. A lot of the good brands na you can purchase pre-owned na will hit those three criteria, okay? Versatile, upgradable, and parts availability will be either Asus, HP, um, I think the last one is I have to go with Dell or MSI. As much as possible, I try to stay away from the micro brands so yung mga brands na hindi masyadong kilala or yung mga brands na tends to be pricey yung piyesa like the Toshiba like um, Sony or yung Samsung kasi somehow I feel hindi sila ganun ka common para makahanap ako ng spare parts in the future and baka mamaya dahil hindi rin ganun ka common yung mga laptops eh mahirapan din akong ipa-repair sila dahil konti lang yung kakakilala kong knowledgeable about those platforms or uh, knowledgeable with those make and models. Yung upgradeability guys, malalaman nyo to kung meron kayong medyo techy na friend. Uh, kasi more or less alam nila kung ano yung mga laptop na hindi na na-upgrade yung mga pyesa or yung mismong specifications and kung ano yung madali lang i-upgrade. Uh, example ko dito, for me, yung binili ko na HP EliteBook G1 napaka-common niya kasi na laptop guys and actually yung generation na binili ko kitang-kita ko na mabili siyang i-upgrade. Paano? Kasi pag open mo pa lang ng back cover, nakikita mo na lahat doon yung mga nakaabang na ports for an SSD upgrade, for a RAM upgrade, etc. So, kung hindi kayo sure uh, kung upgradable yung, yung mga computer na yung computer model na bibilin nyo, make sure to check muna sa mall. Yan ang best tip ko sa inyo. So by no means I am endorsing specific brands. These are just based on my personal experience. You are also free to choose kung anong brand yung feeling nyo is doon kayo pinakapalagay. Pero at this time and based on my previous dealings with kung sino yung mga nakausap ko for the repair shops and the sellers, yung mga minention ko model sila HP, sila Dell, Asus, yan ang pinaka-common and napakadaling i-troubleshoot and maraming parts na available. Since na-determine na natin yung... Uh, specific make and model and the use um, software specifications na ng laptop natin and nakahanap na rin tayo ng reliable source ito yung gumawa ako actually ng checklist kung ano yung mga dapat i-testing nyo dun sa mismong laptop bago nyo iabot yung bayad nyo okay please bear in mind napaka-importante na to kailangan lahat ng nasa checklist na to is gumagana okay Kung meron mang hindi gumagana dito, please do not buy that laptop. It's a bad sign. Alright? This will be my checklist. Please make sure you can also do a screenshot later on this video 
pag uh, ifa-flash ko dito kung ano yung mga kailangan nyo i-check. Nung una guys, syempre napaka-importante for the laptops and una tong bumibigay sa mga lumang laptops is yung keyboard. Okay? Make sure na lahat ng keys for the keyboard are functioning. Madaling check lang for this is you have to download a keyboard tester. So make sure na pag bibili kayo ng laptop, you meet somewhere na may una Wi-Fi, pangalawa may wall outlet. Ang best na example nito is mga coffee shops, mga Starbucks, or kung pwede rin dalhin sa bahay niyo mismo, yung mismong unit, uh, kung malapit lang yung seller, or kayo mismo yung pumunta dun sa bahay ng seller, which I did uh, when I bought my laptop. So once na-download niyo yung keyboard tester, dun nyo matcha-check more or less kung lahat ng keys, ipipress nyo isa-isa, pati yung trackpad, pati yung mga click nung mga parang dun sa mismong track, trackpad, left click, right click, uh, makikita nyo kung gumagana. You also need to check yung mga power button, ganyan kung lahat ng buttons, ay eh, maganda ba yung click. Ang first nga pala na kailangan nyo i-check, syempre yung aesthetics ng laptop, yung overall appearance nga, kung marami ba siyang dents, bumps, or scratches yung ibang laptop din na bubuksan ka agad yung likod. So more or less makikita nyo doon guys kung bugbog sarado na yung laptop na bibilin nyo or kung madumi ba siya or kung well maintained or well kept yung laptop. Uh, sometimes masisilip nyo yung mismong motherboard. So alam nyo na more or less kung luma ba yung laptop or kung na-repair ba yung laptop or kung medyo pangit na yung yung state ng laptop na mabibili nyo. You need to check for the wireless connectivity kasi ito yung isa sa mga selling features of a laptop. Siyempre, kailangan marunong siya mag-connect sa or makakapag-connect siya ng Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Pinakamadali, mag-check for Wi-Fi connectivity. Kung meron ka namang hotspot yan, maganda rin. Pang-check mo sa phone, connect mo lang doon sa hot, hotspot ng phone mo. For the Bluetooth, it's the same principle. As long as you're able to connect your Bluetooth um, phones or mobile phones, then that should be okay. Next na kailangan natin i-check, guys, is yung screen flex. Okay? Uh, isa din kasi to sa mga medyo pricey pag you will have it repaired. So, kailangan yung screen ng laptop is hindi napalitan o hindi in-repair. So, ang quick check lang for this, itry nyo i-open yung laptop um, na binibili nyo and i-open nyo on a um, alanganin na angle. Parang ganito. So, parang ganito guys. I-open nyo lang yung lid ng laptop or yung cover ng laptop. Tapos, tignan nyo kung gagalaw yung mismong screen. So, the mere fact na hindi gumagalaw yung screen, it just means na maganda pa yung lock or maganda pa yung flex ng mismong screen ng laptop ninyo. Also, habang ginagalaw mo yung mismong screen or yung flex ng laptop, there shouldn't be any parang uh, issues dun sa mismong picture niya. Hindi siya dapat nagbibling, hindi siya dapat naguguhit-guhit. Dapat flawless yung pagkaka-display ng picture Otherwise, baka may problema na yan sa flex and you should not buy it. Next thing that you need to check will be the USB ports. Ang madaling pang check nito is yung mismong cable nyo, yung charging cable nyo. Saksak nyo lang uh, one by one do sa mga USB ports for you to be able to check kung gumagana ba sila. Pinaka-accurate na magdedetermine kung bago or luma or nasa maganda pang state yung battery ng laptop na binibili nyo guys is serve nyo sa for a long time. Ang ibig ko sabihin dito, Uh, ilagay niyo yung brightness, isagad niyo sa pinakasagad na setting, i-on niyo lahat ng peripherals, tapos hayaan niyo lang naka-display yung screen doon or better yet mag-play kayo ng movie. Tapos timing niyo more or less kung gaano ba kabilis malobat yung laptop. For me, yun yung pinaka pinaka-accurate way to test kung bago man or luma yung battery rather than going through the battery cycles. Kasi syempre minsan replacement na yung battery na makukuha ninyo. Um, yung battery cycles na sasabihin konting cycles pa lang pero since replacement na yung, na nga yung battery eh napakabilis maloba thankfully yung nabili ko naman sa akin ang naging issue lang niya is uh, mabilis siya maloba at pag nag 50% na siya going lower to syempre mabilis siya mabat empty from, from the 50% pero from the 100% to 50% it usually lasts for about 3 hours to around three and a half hours which is not bad for a laptop na used na nabili. It also helps to check kung magkano yung replacement battery in case you will need to replace the laptop's battery. In my case, ang replacement battery for the EliteBook G1 Gen 4 is around mga 
2,500 to 1,600 lang. So, that's relatively cheap. Also, after checking na lahat ng mga peripherals or hardware ng laptop is, no, is gumagana, syempre, let's go back to yung bonus ko kanina na dapat upgradable yung laptop. So, make it possible if uh, you can open yung back cover ng laptop kasi a lot of the laptops naman may notch lang na pinipress para ma-open yung mismong likod. Tapos doon yung makikita more or less kung ano yung mga peripherals na nakadikit doon like the uh, the RAM sticks, kung may SSD drive ba siya, etc. Doon yung na rin makikita guys kung upgradable pa talaga yung mga parts ng laptop in the future in case meron na kayong budget para i-stretch yung specs ng laptop nyo. Like for for my case, for example, nakita ko na dalawang available RAM card slots yung nandun sa laptop. Uh, M.2 ready rin siya, tapos may SSD drive din siya na nakaabang yung port. So, pagka meron na akong budget, ang gagawin ko is bibilan ko siya ng SSD, i-upgrade ko yung RAM sticks niya, tapos kung available na yung mga M.2 and may budget, then I will also go for that. Ang total estimate budget ko uh, after upgrading it is uh, I will end up for about 22-23,000 pesos yung nagastos ko sa lahat ng laptop na yan kasama na lahat ng upgrade ko. And ang comparable laptop with the same specs pag binili ko ng brand new is around 40,000 plus guys. So imagine kung magkano yung natipid ko by doing those upgrades. At the same time, it will also future-proof my laptop uh, para hindi ako palit ng palit ng laptop so makakatipid ka ron. and more importantly since ang reason ko naman kung bakit ako bumili ng laptop is for video editing so 16 gigs of RAM is pretty decent for someone to edit using Adobe Premiere Pro on 1080p render consequently uh, the same specs of that laptop will be able to handle most of the demanding um, games that we have right now. Okay, and last but not the least, actually, medyo bonus na lang to. You have to make sure na when you buy the laptop is yung OS nya saka yung mga Microsoft Office nya are all so installed. And last but not the least, after nyo na-check lahat ng to at nagbayad na kayo sa seller, when you get home, make sure na bugbugin nyo muna yung laptop for one day. Talagang itodo nyo yung usage para kung ano man yung mga imperfections na ay eh, lumabas na. That way, you will already catch kung ano yung mga kailangan uh, ayusin sa laptop or kung kailangan mo siyang ibalik or iparepair sa seller. Pero if all goes well, like what happened to me, uh, mga minor concerns lang naman na hindi ganun ka-importante. So, for me, sulit na sulit yung pagkakabili ko on my laptop. So, yun na nga guys, on my tips on how to save for your laptop. And I hope you find this video informative. If you did guys, smash the like button and don't forget to subscribe. Again, I upload 2 to 3 videos per week talking about tech fitness and lifestyle so make sure to always check my channel and my playlist as well aside dyan make it a habit to check the description down below kasi dito ko nilalagay yung mga naka feature na items on my videos and more importantly stay tuned for future uploads again Joe Mack here and have a great day guys I'll see you next time